You see this shit? This is where the war's always been at its worst. This is where the worm kills and twists and fucks up people because it knows nobody cares. We are the bastards who've been on this battlefield forever. Remember that. Hello, 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 and welcome back to Werewolf Wednesday. In the last Werewolf the Apocalypse lore video, we talked about the Black Furies, and in this video, we'll be discussing the Bone Nars. The Bone Nars are the scavengers and survivors of the Garu, seen by the other tribes as little more than mongrels who sift through the waste of mankind, ragged and luckless, hunting territories no other tribe wants, and breeding with kin no other tribe claims. The children of Rat are disdained as living proof of how far the Garu have fallen from grace. The Bone Nars themselves see it differently. They're the most populous tribe in the Garu Nation. They're not the picture of failure, they're the picture of success, because they're playing the game of survival. The Bone Nars claim to descend from the underdogs of Garu society, their name itself being an insult from the alphas and more noble werewolves in the Garu tongue. Many of the earliest Bone Nars were banned from their own tribes, seeking to redeem themselves by joining the lowliest among them, who always fought on the front lines against the minions of the Worm. It was only during the Concord that they formed the tribe, but they refused the separation of Garu and humanity. Instead, they prefer to prowl in the cities. Many of the early Bone Nars can be traced back to North Africa and India, but the Nars stopped keeping track a long time ago. They spread out to follow humanity and always attach themselves to the wretched and the downtrodden. Their oral history is full of revolutionary stories of the oppressed defying and overthrowing their oppressors. It is recorded, however, that they shared territory with another tribe, the Silent Striders, in Egypt, breeding with the scavengers native there and aiding them from time to time in their struggles against the vampire clan, followers of Set. The result was that Set, even if he didn't curse the tribe as he did with the Striders, shattered their homeland and drove them off, forcing them to seek shelter in the territories of other Garu or even in some vampire-claimed areas. The Greek concept of democracy also held special interest for the tribe and within Rome, they were known to fight against slavery and vie for influence with other tribes and even sometimes claim it. When Rome fell though, the tribes scattered all over Europe. Some served along with other tribes in their war efforts, while others integrated into the oppressed and outcast, protecting them and sometimes even making them kinfolk. When the plague ravaged the medieval world, the Bone Nars tried their best to aid the poor who suffered most under the illness, with the result that many kin were accused of witchcraft during the Inquisition and put to the pyre. This decreased the tribe's enthusiasm to help, although it didn't extinguish it. When the first ship sailed off into the New World, many Bone Nars followed, hoping for a better world where they wouldn't be oppressed, aiding various revolutions in hopes to gain a little bit more influence for themselves, using the American Revolution as a way to relieve themselves and found some seps of their own. The Bone Nars fought side by side with humans, in human form and without supernatural aid, in order to preserve the veil. In Europe, they tried to do the same with the French Revolution, but they did not succeed like they did in the USA. Most Bonars were also involved with the World Wars in one way or another. They were among the first to recognize the danger humanity now posed. More than any other tribe, the Bonars realized that these are the final nights, their chance to prove their worth to the nation and the greatest battle against the worm that will ever come to pass. Some shy away from this notion. Others embrace it to let it inspire them to heroic deeds, and most strive to survive, as they always have. Freedom and practicality rule above all else when it comes to the Bone Nars. They care little for the supposed superiority of Garu and are content to remain in the alleys, gutters, and sewers of man as long as it means they can live on their own terms. Most Bone Nars thrive in cities occupying decaying suburban wastelands, even prospering in rundown rural backwaters. The Bone Nar creed is whatever works. No other tribe is as accomplished at urban fighting as the Bone Nars, and surprise is considered their primary tactic. They've mastered a variety of vicious guerrilla tactics suited to their hazardous environments. They know where to find food, or even how to conjure it out of trash. Many Bone Nars encourage the ideas of their lesser status, as it can be turned into an advantage when their enemies underestimate them. 
Bonars tend to be the most democratic of the tribes, often giving everyone an equal voice at a moot. Though renown and rank can be important to Bonar seps and packs, respect is usually given to the oldest and or most experienced member of the tribe present. They often strike odd alliances with other supernaturals lurking in the lower strata of human society, maybe even leeches, what Garus call vampires. This leads to the Children of Rat having access to all manner of interesting secrets that come from listening to people other Garu disdain. The rites and traditions of the Bonars are seen by other tribes as extremely strange and bizarre, even though their rituals are unusual and rely strongly on human practices and pop culture, the Bonars take them as seriously as any of the more naturalistic rites of the other tribes, particularly as many of them grant advantages for survival as much as they do spiritual comfort. The Bonar's major weakness is that the other tribes tend to keep them at a distance, so they have few true allies. But even this weakness has contributed to their strength of self-reliance out of necessity. Another unfortunate weakness is a gradual thinning of the wolf blood. The Bonars have some lupus kin, but not many, and have kept up their numbers mostly with human partners. They're also thick with Garu born, which accusers claim shows little respect for the litany, and there's a hint of truth in that. Plenty of bone Nars have given in to forbidden desires, but the Nars are also prone to adoption. Many a Garu born was abandoned by its parents in other tribes, but brought in to be a good soldier of rat. The Bonar pragmatism doesn't overrule renown, however. Honor, wisdom, and glory still matter to them. Admittedly, their catch-as-catch-can character shines through, even in these higher ideals. An honorable Bonar philodox isn't afraid to lay down an unorthodox twist on a law. Likewise, a smart theurge might be mistaken for a homeless person, babbling to themselves about the voices of trash and desperation. I make World of Darkness lore videos multiple times a week, so if you enjoy what I do, please consider subscribing. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Now ask yourselves this, Garu. When will you rage?